Now the rest of the section was filmed in 2014 and since then it seems that the theory of inflation has uh, gone down a lot in popularity. In this video I'd like to update you with our current opinions about inflation theory as of 2020. Now I must apologise that I haven't got Brian here to film with me. Since 2014 he's become Vice-Chancellor of the Australian National University and is far too busy running the university to actually take part in video clips like this. I'm also filming this under COVID-19 lockdown, which is why it's being filmed in my garden. It's also why I have a different waistcoat on, because my normal waistcoat is locked to my office and I can't get to it. Anyway, here as of 2020 is the update. Now, Lawrence in his interview talked about the one piece of really clear evidence for inflation, which would be gigantic gravitational waves. These are not the sort of gravitational waves you pick up with gravity wave detectors, as we talked about in the Violent Universe course. These are gravity waves bigger than galaxy superclusters, enormous mega parsec scale gravity waves left over from the era of inflation. And he said that this was a definite prediction. And back when he said that, there had recently been a claim from an experiment called BICEP2 that these gravitational waves had actually been seen by their polarising effect on the microwave background. Here is the BICEP-2 telescope and a number of other telescopes located at the South Pole in Antarctica. Now this telescope, that's BICEP-2 in the foreground and another telescope in the background, it's set in Antarctica to take advantage of the very cold weather and the uh, lack of water vapour in the atmosphere. It was looking at the microwave background radiation. We'll talk much more about that later in the course. What it was looking for in particular was swirly patterns in the polarization of the microwave background light. And this is what you expect to get because of these inflation produced mega gravity waves. It should squish and compress the radiation so it tends to be lined up. And here's what they claim to have seen. So these are the polarization patterns in the little part of the sockeye they saw. And these are simulations of the sorts of patterns you would expect to see from cosmic inflation. And if you look at this and you look at that, this and that, they look kind of similar. There seem to be the right sort of swirly patterns. And this is what Lawrence was referring to. It looked like we had, for, for the first time, real evidence that inflation was actually true. Not just philosophical arguments about how it avoids fine-tuning or something like that. There seemed to be real hard evidence that this rather crazy in theory about top hats and strange forces actually was true. Also, it seemed, but right from the moment this was released, a big splash, huge uh, media coverage, people thinking about maybe they're getting the Nobel Prize for this, uh, doubt started to be raised. The trouble is that the microwave background radiation is contaminated by radiation from things in our own galaxy. The microwave background, remember, is coming from the very early universe, but it has to pass through our galaxy to reach us. And there's radiation from our own galaxy, particularly what's called synchrotron radiation, that's from electrons spiralling their magnetic field lines in interstellar space, and dust emission and absorption. Dust grains tend to be lined up by interstellar magnetic fields, and that causes swirly patterns of polarisation as well. So could this be due just to dust in our own galaxy and not due to giant gravity waves in the early universe? Well, people start to th get nervous about this and then more nervous about it. The real coup de grace came a year later. The data from the Planck satellite, this is a European Space Agency microwave background mapping satellite, and it had the capability to actually see if dust was causing these swirly patterns. That's because it could observe at two different wavelengths at once, and the spectrum of dust will be different from the spectrum of these primordial gravity waves. So by looking at the spectral pattern of these swirls, it could work out if they're real or not. And the answer came back pretty unequivocal. These swirly patterns are caused by dust in our own galaxy. They are not the predictions of inflation theory. So. Inflation theory makes one clear prediction, and that clear prediction has not been confirmed. So, if we haven't seen these polarisation patterns, the gravity waves from inflation, does that mean the inflation theory is dead? Remember that Lawrence said this was a very, very clear prediction. Well, perhaps it should have meant they're dead. It certainly meant that the inflation theory has gone down a lot in popularity. It is possible to tweak your inflation theory so that the 
fluctuations, the polarization is below our new detection threshold. Fluctuations could still be there, just not bright enough to see over with our current instrumentation and buried in the polarization caused by dust. The simplest inflation theories say you should see this, it's not been seen there dead, but you can make your theories a bit more complicated. So is inflation dead? No. But it's certainly become a lot less popular. A lot of eminent theorists are now openly criticising the theory and saying maybe this is a wrong turn. I will put some links to some of the papers and articles criticising it. But the basic idea, problems fall into the fine-tuning argument um, and the idea that this maybe isn't science at all. Now the fine-tuning argument, uh, remember the reason why we thought inflation was a good idea was that it naturally explained things like the lack of monopoles and the flatness of the universe. Now if you ask why is the universe flat you could just say it was just made that way which is fine-tuning. You just had to invoke an arbitrary rule that when God was deciding what the universe was like, they had to pick the dial to make the geometry exactly flat. Whereas inflation said that God could have set the dial almost anywhere and you could have had almost any initial curvature and it would have ended up flat. So you don't need to fine-tune that dial. Sounds pretty good, but the trouble is to get inflation to work at all, you have to fine-tune a lot of other things. You have to invent a special, fictitious, uh, top hat potential force and have to have exactly the right conditions to make that work. So some of these theorists are saying that sure it avoids one fine-tuning problem at the expense of a whole bunch of other fine-tuning problems so it doesn't really explain anything at all. The other argument is that inflation theories are altogether too flexible. Nowadays inflation theorists say inflation predicts a flat universe, but actually when the papers first came out about inflation they predicted an open universe because that's what the observers thought at the time we lived in. If you adjust your potential, your top hat shape, um, all the conditions, the energy fields that make it work, you can predict almost anything you like from inflation theories. Some would say this is a good thing, it's a theory that cannot be proven wrong. Other people will say, that's not science. A theory that cannot pr be proven wrong isn't science. It's like horoscopes or something like this. It's not even wrong. The harshest criticism a scientist can give. So what's the truth? Inflation is not dead, but its popularity has certainly gone down an awful lot. And it's certainly failed the only experimental test it's ever really faced. Personally, I've always been pretty sceptical of it. Humans are altogether too good at coming up with weird and wonderful ideas, and unless we are constrained by some data, we usually go wrong. This inflation theory is so far from data, it's very hard to test anything, and to my mind that's always a warning flag. When you go a long way from data, you have to be worried.